Now, it's a bit of a running joke on Deep Sky videos that we haven't got much to say about open clusters. How are you going to uh, remedy this? So, well, there's an interesting thing about Messier 67, which is that when you start analysing its properties, you find that it's about 4 billion years old, which turns out to be more or less exactly the same age as the Sun. And when you analyse its chemical abundances, they turn out to be almost exactly the same as the Sun as well. And since we don't actually know where the Sun came from, and this is a relatively nearby open cluster, and we think probably all stars originated in open clusters and then kind of escaped from them, one hypothesis that's kind of been doing the rounds is that this was actually where the Sun was born. So it could potentially be the Sun's birthplace. M67 is the oldest cluster in the Messier catalogue. It's quite faint. You need a pair of binoculars to be able to see it as a misty patch. And it tends to get overlooked because of its brighter companion in the constellation, which is M44, the Beehive Cluster, which is much brighter and easier to see. But it's known that there are sort of 100 or so stars in there which are of similar composition and similar sort of size, etc., to the Sun. And that makes it quite interesting, because that means if we are looking into the cluster, we can actually look at a big family of stars which are very similar to our own Sun. And you'd hope to see them all quite nice and going out about their business in a very average way, not doing anything particularly exciting. Well, that isn't the case. Some of them, about 30% of them, are actually quite a lot more energetic than our own sun. And that could be seen as a bit of a worry, because we don't know everything about our own sun. There's a few peculiar things about the sun. It's not quite like all the stars in the vicinity of the sun, so it looks like it came from somewhere different. So it will be good to figure out where it did come from. People have started looking at this in more detail, and so this is a very detailed study, trying to figure out whether this is actually a consistent scenario or not. What these guys have done is a bunch of very sophisticated simulations with a very complicated model of the Milky Way, where they basically take this model and wind the clock backwards and try and see whether, for any plausible set of parameters, the sun and this cluster end up in the same place at the same time at some point in the past. And they do. And so that sounds quite good, and that's great. But they have more information, of course, because one of the things they can measure is, OK, so at these points in the past where the two were more or less at the same place, how fast were they moving relative to each other? Because if that's the point in the past when the sun is just escaping from this cluster, it shouldn't really be moving very fast. The, the sort of typical random motions within this cluster is only about a kilometre per second or so. So if the sun's going to escape from there, typically it would probably come out at a few kilometres per second. But when they do all these simulations, they find that in no cases can they get a case where the sun is in the same place as this cluster and is travelling less than 20 kilometres per second relative to the cluster. So it's whizzing away from it far too fast for this picture to work. The alternative is that it could get kicked out of the cluster. And the way things can get kicked out is if there's a binary star in the cluster, so a pair of stars in tight orbit around one another, the Sun then encounters this binary star. One of the things we know about those what are called three-body encounters, so a binary star plus a third star coming into it, is that the third star can get kicked out at high speed. And in fact, the typical speed you'd expect the Sun to get kicked out at in that case is around 20 kilometers per second, which is great because that then fits in with this nice picture, well, we can make this consistent as long as the Sun got kicked out of the cluster at 20 kilometers per second. So the clever thing they did is they said, OK, so if that's the source, if that's what happened, let's look at the details of how that interaction would have to work. And it turns out that the process of kicking the sun out would also destroy the solar system. And so the fact that the sun has a solar system means that it can't have gone through this process at any point in its past. And unfortunately, they kind of give away the punchline in the title there. But as you can see, they come to the conclusion that really this isn't where the sun came from. Astronomers don't usually say anything as kind of uh, definitive as that. You know, astronomers usually say, well, this is, you know, suggestive or it's new constraints on so-and-so. It's not often you get a statement quite as blunt as that in astronomy. OK, I'm going to ask you to make a prediction here. In your lifetime, will the cluster that gave us the sun be discovered? Probably not. I mean, the nice thing is this was the obvious candidate. And because it's a very nearby, well-studied, well-constrained question, we can get that very different answer. No, it didn't come from there. When you start looking, well, there's a more diffuse group of stars over there that maybe the sun came from, the questions get less and less well posed. So actually, the ability to come up with a definitive answer probably gets less and less. So it's quite likely we'll never quite know where the sun came from. Would that be like Nobel Prize material, or would it just be? I don't think so. Because you know, Nobel Prize, there has to be some big picture implication. Right? It actually has to have implications for some new industry being invented, or some huge area of physics being opened up, or whatever. This is really just a kind of a, a rather parochial puzzle that we'd like to know where the sun came from, but it doesn't really answer any big questions in astrophysics. I really want to know that. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know too. <laughs>